Move on to the next one, which is 354. Okay, and that is winning an auction. Okay, so uh, it's the same old story. Everything we're doing tonight is in this wonderful Remix thing, which is great because you don't have to uh, you don't have to install anything or anything like that. Yes, yes, smart contracts, the same kind of stuff you already saw. So we're going to win at an auction. So first, I'm going to clean up this mess. I've deployed these crazy contracts. I'm going to take them off the blockchain. And now I've got my balances all screwed up. So I'm going to switch to Berlin and then back to London. And now my balances are all back up to 100 Ether. I've got a nice clean blockchain. So the contract I want to use this time is um, auction, which is here. OK, so here's an auction. And an auction is going to have people bidding. So here's how it works. Uh, somebody can bid. And if their value of the money they offer is bigger than the highest bid, then they become the winner. Let's see, something about this decrement have to happen outside the loop, or would it have been enough if it were, say, on line 11? Well, let me bring that up again. I've seen a question about the last one. Um, this is 353. Let's take a look at that. So uh, line, OK. So if you put the subtraction in line 11, just moving it up one, that might have been good enough. You're right. Um, we, you could try it and see. But just switching these two lines might have been enough, too. I, but they chose to do it the other way in the tutorial I followed. Um, I think that would have worked, too. It's a good question. Yeah. It might be interesting to do that and see why. I'm not quite sure why they didn't do it in this more complicated way. There's probably a good reason. But yeah, it looks to me like just flipping those two lines would have been pretty good, too. Oh, no, I know why. If you just flip these two lines, well, no, it has this gifts less than, if gifts greater than zero. I think that might have been enough. You're right. It's a good question, and I have not tested it, but I think you're right. It would be easy enough to test, though. Anyway, uh, let's carry on with the auction, and maybe later we can try the uh, re-entry attack that other way. So here's the auction. You can bid. If your bid is bigger than the highest bid, then you become the winner. But the process whereby you become the winner is, first, it gives back the money to the currently highest bid, and then it makes you the winner, and the highest bid is you. So you send money to bid, and if the money you send is more than the highest bidder, it returns the other person's bid, and now you're the winner. So that's the auction. So let's compile the contract and deploy it. So we compile it. Uh, here we are. Oh, we compile it here. OK. And uh, OK, it warns us that various things are not safe here, but it compiles. And now we can deploy it. And the, so you, just like before, there's an attacker and an auction. The auction has no parameters, and we can deploy it. So now I got an auction down here. All right. And now we can deploy the attacker. The attacker, just like before, needs to have the address of the auction contract. So we go to the attacker, give it the address, so it knows whose it is hacking, and deploy that. Now we have auction and attacker down here that have buttons we can do things. Now, um, we'll run a normal auction. So we're going to bid one. So we go up here where the first account say, let's bid one Ether. One Ether. And so I bid. OK, that transaction went through. And my balance fell down to 99 Ether. So um, now the current leader is 5B3. And that's me, 5B3. And the current highest bid is 1, followed by 18 zeros. So I bid 1, and I'm now the winner. So now the second person is going to bid 2. That's AB8, bids 2. And so I bid that. Now, the current leader is now AB2, and the highest bid is now 2. So this person has fallen to 98, but the first account has gone back up to 100 because it gave back the one Ether, back to the first person, to let the second person win. So it's working, as intended. Now, what we're going to do is attack it with the attacker. 
So we're going to, um, let's go to the third account. And we're going to bid three from this account, but we're going to do it down here with the attacker. So I have to bid three. And then I go down and win. And now the third account is CA3. And if I look who's winning, it's C, uh, yeah, 8B8. Did I do it wrong? Um, no, it's CA3. Well, the bid is three. I don't know why this address looks full, because this is not the address of that account. It's the address of this contract. But anyway, the winner is now three. And that's the address of this contract down here, DB8. It's not the address of that account up there. It's the address of this contract that it went to. But the point is, I'm now the bidder of three. And now, if somebody up here tries to bid four, they are not going to be able to. Like the fourth person here might want to bid four. And if they do, the transactions revert. You don't see the green check mark. And the current leader remains DB8, and the current bid remains three. And the reason that happened is because of the logic here. The logic is, um, if you bid and you are the highest bid, um, then the first thing it does is um, refund. It sends the money back. And then it changes the leader in the highest bid. And in my attacker contract, when people pay me, I go to the fallback function, and the fallback function calls revert. So if you try to give money back, I will not accept it. I give it back to you. You cannot refund money to this contract. So by refusing to take the money back, I block the logic and nobody else can ever win the auction. That's uh, very much like the last one. It's just a matter of having the commands in the wrong order. It gives you a logic flaw. If I refuse to take my money back, then you cannot have somebody else win. The fallback gets called because when you pay somebody, it calls like a receive function at that end. And if there is no receive function, it calls the fallback function. This is a default in Solidity. Uh, so people can send you money. And even if you fail to prepare a function to receive money, it will have this fallback function, which is the default function. If you call a contract, it will go to the fallback function when you don't specify what function you want to call, like when you're sending money to it. Could the same thing we don't receive? Um, I think not, but I'm not sure. I think receive has some limitations, but the fallback doesn't. And like I say, they, this, so um, these are very good questions, and I don't really remember the answer. I learned a little bit of solidity enough to make these contracts, but I, I don't remember all the details. Anyway, this is all, these are very good questions. And so this is, this is the fundamental flaw here. I would say paying money into a contract should just be a built-in function of the language. But they let me write the code to receive the money and do any damn thing I want in here, which is pretty screwy. All right. So that's an auction. And I'm going to stop this one.